And welcome everybody to Tint Wisdom number 47. You'll recognize the face to my left, which is Ralph Ampel. Ralph, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Once again, number three. Number three, you're the freaking, your, your, vid, your wisdom has been, hold some records. So it's the longest duration awesome. and you're the most recurring guest. So that's two wisdom, um, wisdom awards right there. And um, awesome. it's also the I'm most commented Tint Wisdom and possibly the most viewed on Facebook. So it's quite the uh, expectations to live up to for this Tint Wisdom. Hey, let's blow it out of the water on this number three, man. Let's, I'm ready. Let's do it. So <laughs> before we jump into today's topic, um, let's get everyone who is watching now, if you could possibly share it into, um, share it to your friends, share it to the Facebook groups. It helps others get in here. It gets, it helps others ask great questions, which gets great answers for everyone. So more sharing, the better. And, um, and then we'll jump in. So today's topic or what, what I wanted to talk to you about today was, um, was the plotter. The plotter has been something, you know, you just did a couple of videos on the plotter and I had some questions for you. I feel like there's probably a lot of questions for you, but with that said, any questions that want to get asked throughout this Tint Wisdom, we're going to ask those questions as they come in live. Um, we're not going to wait till the end. So ask your questions. They'll get answered, whether it's about the plotter, whether it's about anything. Um, that's what we're here for. So let's do it. So let's hey, start with this. I just want to. Oh, go ahead. Go I, ahead. I don't want to interrupt. You got a little choppy on me. Is everything smooth on your end for me? I'm, Everything's clear uh, on my end. Okay, just making sure. Everything looks good. So, if you, if you, if you got some background noise or anything, just let me know. I, I can make some field adjustments if necessary. I can hear the fan you have going. It is is be, it distracting? Because I, no, I can turn it off. It's I mean, not. Okay, cool, cool. It's not. I'm just kidding. I don't even know oh, okay. if there's a fan. Um, <laughs> that was <laughs> it kind of got, got, got me nervous here. That was a trick, trick answer I gave you. But okay. I guess there's a fan. Okay. Um, all right, so plotter. You just did a live okay. that I watched that uh, I think was a great video where you demoed the plotter. So the plotter was something that you brought up a couple weeks ago. And what we're talking about here is a small plotter, um, a reasonably priced plotter. Give me some background on this plotter and how you're introducing it and how you anticipate it being used. Well, I got to make a bold statement before we start that, uh, uh, before I share that information. Okay. I am going... I, Flex Film, you know, we're going to change the industry, okay? I've done this before. I don't want to take any wrongful credit. You know, I, I didn't invent ceramic film. I didn't invent heat boxes. But I cer I've certainly had a, had a role in carrying them deeper into our market, our industry, and um, our culture. And, um, you know, I, I believe waves were created. I mean, when I saw Lumar launch ceramic film, I thought, yeah, you know, I've got, I've made some noise. Um, I'm, I didn't invent plotters, okay? I'm not taking any special credits, but, but um, you know, it seems like if you want to get into the plotter business to, to, to help cut patterns for your tent shop, you've got to make this three to $5,000 investment, and it seems to be reserved for people who, who want to take that step. And, um, you know, the, the, these, these smaller, uh, I believe they refer to them as soccer mom plotters, They've always intrigued me, but I, you know, I, I don't, I never knew why they were off limits. Why do we not see these little plotters in our industry? I mean, we we have big plotters, you know, and we have. Um, so let's let me, let me stop you there. Why? I want to do a lot of interrupting. What's that? I said let me stop you there. I want to do a lot of interrupting today. Um, Go ahead, man. <laughs> I have please. questions. So let me stop you at soccer mom plotter. Um, what okay. what does that term mean? Let's start there. Thank you. That's a good question, man. Thank you for uh, asking that. Um, the way I understand it is that these plotters are uh, the most frequently purchased plotters in the world. I even know one source that sells them in the United States alone that's uh, hit ten million dollars in sales uh, for one year. You know, and, and there's other ones uh, companies selling them as well. They're typically made in China. Uh, I would say they're probably at a price point of under a thousand dollars. I'd say you can get some for in the three hundred dollar price range. And so, soccer mom. Okay, why do we call them soccer mom plotters? Because the most popular, frequent purchaser of these units are soccer moms. I mean, they are making T-shirts for the 
you know, for the team, you know, these little plotters are cutting out little decals and things they like to, you know, you know, uh, use to promote and do things on a DIY sort of level. Got it. So literally and, soccer mom plotters. Literally soccer mom plotters. Like literally literally I mean, soccer moms are purchasing them and they're using them for stuff that. Hey, they them. probably printed the soccer ball with the vinyl that's on the back of their SUV. They, mm -hmm. they probably did something to, you know, that, that was instrumental in manufacturing this. The, the print on the t-shirts, you know, they may, they, they may have brought a, bought a heat press, you know, you you know, for, for just hundreds of dollars, you can get into the, you know, t-shirt business and, and you can help, you know, with, with the uh, soccer mom stuff, you know, DIY stuff. Okay. You know? Good, okay. good. Got it. So okay. perfect. No, I'm sorry. Uh, keep no, going no, from you. where we, where we, where you left off. Yeah. So, so, you know, it's like, why are we not seeing more of these little plotters in our, in our industry, you know, we have small mom and pop tent shop operations. You know, why why wouldn't we be able to get into one of these things for hundreds of dollars, or maybe maybe a, maybe our window film manufacturer or supplier maybe give us one, mm -hmm. you know, so that we can cut patterns and you know maybe you know promote our business. I mean, I know a, a good distributor should 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 provide good film and some tools and, and um, maybe you know coffee mug and a good banner, but that's where it stops, man. Like. Why don't we try to get involved with helping our customers make make more money, be efficient, you know, cut these patterns, you know, that's where what I started doing. So, why, now here we are talking about plotters, okay? Um, I, I started asking these questions, you know. I, I, I'm I'm this guy, you know, like why are we not selling ceramic film, you know, ten years ago? I mean, I put my hand in front of it; it, it works better than anything I've ever seen. So, you know, sometimes you just have to you just have to plow forward when you when you have a vision and you don't understand why this is not more typical. And that's what I've done. I've spent a lot of research and a lot of time trying to figure out why we don't have soccer mom plotters. So I'm, I was going to, you know, this live, it, we're going to get into that. I'm going to, I'm going to explain to people here, there's a culture in our industry, you know, why would we do what we do, you know, and, and a lot of this has to do with plotters or a lot of this has to do with the size rolls you buy. Why do you buy 24 inch rolls when you don't, you know, why, why, do you, why don't you buy 60 inch rolls and do back windows and roll them up and down and shrink them on the side? There's a culture here, you know, that everybody sort of has in our industry. If you go to Korea, you know, they, they tent windows really well, too, but they have another culture and they do things a little different. These plotters aren't in our industry because of because of cultural reasons, not because of functional reasons, which I've discovered. And I'm going to show you guys later on in the video. Mm -hmm. Um I was giving you a chance to interrupt me. Am I am I doing good so far? Is there any more you know any questions you had on that? Okay. Um, no, no questions on that. That's no pressure there. So, okay, keep going. Okay, so um, you know the first thing I started doing was I you know I got some I have friends uh, you know I, I'm I'm a distributor. You know we have you know film tools. We do that too. So I, I get feedback from people in the field. And some of the every now and then you'll run across a, a tenor who's who has one. You know, they're, they're usually a special breed of tenor. They're a very technical person. They, you know, maybe get into plotters. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they had one from their their wife or maybe they're the soccer dad. You know, who knows? There's all kinds of reasons that people get these little plotters. Maybe they're cutting little stickers out. To, but what's to the go. reason? What do you think the reasons we haven't seen them throughout the industry are? I'm about to I'm about to tell you. Let's I know. I'm interrupting in. okay. you, and, no, and that's no, 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 thank you for keeping me focused. Let's jump into that. Okay. The first reason I discovered when I when I called some several of these manufacturers and said, "Hey, I would like to buy one of these plotters, and you know what I'm going to do with it is cut window film." And, and and every I mean, you can call anyone you want right now. I challenge you, D do it. Here's what they're going to say. Oh no, no, we do not recommend these to cut tent. Well, um, why not? You know, by the time I got actually got one and started cutting tent, I said, why do you not recommend them to cut tent? They said, well, because of uh, static electricity, it'll burn the motherboards or, you know, the, the, the substrates. They'll, 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 these are uh, stepper motors. So why don't you know, we bang those, one out, bang those out one at a time? So static, static electricity, uh, what's the solution to that? Um, first of all, I could go into a lot of detail no, no, about that. Easy. But What's the solution? Is static an issue or not an issue? Okay. It, it, if you don't sell film that has static problems, that's the first solution. You, you prevent it before it happens. You don't cut the wrong material. You, you also have to ground the machines properly, and you have to uh, be, be make some observations about the product and how it's going through, and is there static. And, you know, you got climate situations that create or contribute to static. You just have to be on your toes. There are people 
who actually have five thousand dollar plotters that uh, will burn motherboards over static if they're not careful. Is there's there's you're not going to say that this particular plotter is more likely to have this problem than this than this five thousand dollar one. It does. They're equal. You can burn both motherboards. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the problem I have is like you know I know film and vinyl designs for this one example. You know services probably twenty five hundred customers that I'm aware of. You know, and, and every one of them have five thousand, three thousand, four thousand dollar plotters, and uh, yeah, motherboards burn out on occasion, but it's not typical. They're still in business. All right, you know? so reeling it in here, is there <laughs> any reason why this lower price, smaller plotter would be more likely to be affected by static electricity than a five, seven thousand dollar graph tech or rolling plotter? Hadn't found any it. reason. Hadn't found. Cool. It. So that's out of the question. No worries about that. The next thing no, you different. mentioned was the motor. Yeah, so, so, so if the manufacturer the of the plotter is right, then we need to stop using our plotters and cut them off today because they're all going to blow up, okay? And, and we know that's not true. But that's what they think. That's what they tell you, okay? So who we're definitely uh, the manufacturer of the soccer mom plotter. Oh, got it. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. You see, uh, by the way, we're going over some things here. Okay, we're right now we are in we are having conversations with the manufacturer of the plotter. See, if you want to buy one, the people you want to buy buy one from will not support window film being cut in this machine. So back to the original question. The reason okay. why we probably don't see these in the market too frequently is because of the lack of support from the manufacturer for this Bingo. purpose, for using it for this purpose. Bingo. Boom. So we knocked uh, that out. Now, are there any, other than the lack of support from the manufacturer, are there any reasons why, as a window tin company, what are the differences that you know using it in a window film business that you're going to run into you have a graph tech you have one of these plotters um okay okay that's the a good difference point. in usage what are you going to experience other than size of the printer or plotter obviously okay well, let's stay within the realm of the manufacturer with this okay so so we buy a rolling you drop five thousand you might even drop eight grand you know they're expensive plotters or graph tech same situation okay there's a lot of profit in that machine okay with, with that much of profit you get technical support. Sure. They, they, you give them that much money, they're going to start, hey, you want to cut window film? Sure. Let's let's try it. You know, uh, We have resources available from the manufacturer of these units to help you get that done. If you want to spend eight grand, we, we'll spend time with you. Okay. You want to go buy a $300 plotter and then you want to tell them you're going to cut window film and you want to tie up their $15 an hour technicians or, or $20 an hour technicians. Um, that are gonna so that's why they don't provide support. So we're they clear don't have, they, they don't, don't provide budget. support. So one difference between buying a graph tech or getting one of these other printers is going to yeah. be potentially the lack of support from a manufacturer. How about other, other than the support, what about the usage of it? What, what are things people are going to notice? If you're used to a, a bigger plotter, you've never used a plotter before, what's going to be the differences or is there no difference? There's, there's really no difference. You, you, you're going to move from a servo type motor that's in a, a, a more expensive plotter to a stepper motor. Um, I can get into details of that in a minute. Let's just go move on. You're, you're going to... Um, well, well, let's stop at the... Hold on. Let's stop at the motors because okay. you brought up okay. the motors. So to me, um, I'm vaguely familiar with the two different types of motors, but let's okay. pretend that I have no idea what the difference is. Okay. Um, okay. Why do I even need to ask the question, what type of motors in my plotter? Why does that even matter? What is the difference between those two in, a, in terms that actually affect I'm, somebody using it? I'm not a motor expert, but I can... Let's just go superficial. I, I believe the servo motor is quiet. I, I believe it has the ability to make more intricate cuts. If you're going to cut a really like small vinyl sticker, you're going to need that type of technology. A stepper motors are usually not as in intricate oriented, you know, motors. And, and you know, when you're cutting a, a, a broad, you know, automotive pattern, you don't need the intricacy that, you know, those motors deliver. Um, I've even been told that stepper motors are actually more aggressive in terms of Force, you know, you can get way more force out of a stepper motor, and you get less force out of a servo motor. You don't need a lot of force. You don't need cut window film and other substrates. But but yes, you know, a lot of these stepper motor plotters, you know, they etch, they etch stuff that's like you know metal and stuff like that. They're, um, but but, but uh, another thing is is that you got to understand the market though. The people who buy the eight thousand or five thousand dollar machine are definitely more professional oriented people, and and they're you're able to deal with them on a professional level and and therefore they're going to take on you know that type of uh, technical support okay with the with the diy soccer mom 
model. They don't want to deal with the husband of the soccer mom who ran to Walmart to get some film. They're trying to tent their van over the weekend. Uh, okay, they, they are barking up the wrong tree with that type of... But we're back at support. Yes, we're going back to support. It's so, very... Go ahead. Yeah, go they ahead. want to sell a machine... And, and and they don't really want they don't really want a DIY customer. And I'm gonna quote these people, okay? I didn't make this up. They said these people expect these plotters to poop money. They poop money. Like and, and when when they get angry with the machine not working because they don't work it right, they want to get very aggressive and angry and Hold on. you know, they don't they don't like dealing with so that. What, what we're talking about here is the manufacturers of these plotters not wanting wanting to deal with window tint you know, dealers for a various assortment of reasons. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. But what okay. I want to focus on, and okay. I think is more valuable to the people that are watching, is not why the manufacturers don't like window tinters and how they perceive the industry. It's more along the lines of, as a window tinter, how getting this plotter in their hands can benefit them and how we're going to overcome, or not we, but we as here's an industry, a, you are going to overcome the differences which so far we've identified to be support and so far other than support the other differences to recap are with the smaller plotter you're not going to receive manufacturer support but we're going to talk we're going to figure out how you're addressing that the next yes. thing would be intricate details when you're plotting out a design which is not going to affect somebody plotting out window film for cars or even flat glass it is only going to become something that um, could affect you if you're doing intricate graphics, smaller like lettering and so on. So we have those two differences. Let's bang out the differences, the real world differences, and then we can kind of circle back on how um, those are overcome. So other than those two differences, support and intricate details, louder okay. motor, which who cares about a little bit of noise? Yeah. Is there yeah. anything else from a functional standpoint that a window film yeah. dealer is going to run into differences um, from their the claim on the, the, the these plotters is that it, you got to be particular about the substrates that you're cutting. Uh, you probably don't want to wear your machine out with like sputtered materials or maybe uh, metalized materials. Um, you know, excessive thickness materials. You know, um, you, you know if you want to cut things out like that. We, we're going to go up to a different model, a little bit more, you know, aggressive model. But but for the for the baseline one, that that's probably um, the biggest concern for the manufacturer. Um, but but when we let them know that we're only cutting dyed film, carbon film, and ceramic film, you know, and the substrates that we cut, the thickness of them, and how they're actually easier uh, for the for the machine to move through our substrates than actual vinyl then that takes the pressure off of the machine, you know, being strained over time and then burning the motor up. That's what's the fundamental problem is that the, the, the tech technicians don't understand what we're doing. So once they understand what we're doing, then they begin to really warm up to the plotter being used for what we're doing. Understood. And that's okay. something that I feel like is more between you and the manufacturer. You're fine. You're basically in this scenario because let's circle back when you made a post about the plotters, um, some yes. people commented in the in the comment like some people made comments kind of implying like hey you know anybody can buy one of these plotters and of course anybody can buy one of these plotters Oops, you didn't invent the plotter you're not no, claiming sir. to invent the plotter um, but what what I see you're doing is kind of bridging the gap between this plotter exists window film dealers can benefit from using this plotter and the missing link is the support and kind of like the know how so see, we're Go we're on. becoming partners with the manufacturer okay now we have a relationship because they want to provide us with the with the plotters they want to be excluded uh, they don't want to deal with the uh, service or the technical side of having to talk to customers who we provide the product to to try to get them to cut our substrates they need us to take over responsibility of the technical support because okay. we know their machine and we know how to set their machine up for what we're doing with it. Once they approve of what we're doing with it and they see that there's absolutely nothing wrong with what we're doing, then they're getting excited. They see that new doors are opening for the use of this machine that they, on their level, would not recommend to typical you know, yeah, people. Understood. It would be a nightmare for them. So – if I may, okay, first of all, I want to get okay. into some questions because I promise to ask these questions as people ask them, like to ask okay. you as people ask them. Sure. So I want to jump sure. into the questions okay. um, and then we'll circle back. 
Um, okay. okay. So Mark Bennett said, I enjoyed your conversation about this route the other day. Um, Mitchell said, Ralph's always pushing the limits. Keep up the f- good fight, brother. Um, Jennifer said, nice sweatshirt, Eric. That's my sweatshirt. Um, John said, love my graph tech. Use it daily. Um, and then Ted Speller, that's kind of where the question started. He said he has a graph tech FC 8600, great pro- plotter, yeah. never had a yeah. problem with it. Useful for a whole ton of jobs. So, you know, Ted, obviously graph tech's a great plotter and he uses a plotter. So there's one more person pro plotter. Um, Ted said, plotting window tint is a waste of time. Do you not agree? And then John said, no, it's faster when you use it right. And then Ted said, yes, but you're relying on someone else's judgment of a pattern. Would you not rather have the peace of mind knowing that you have done it yourself? So I feel like that's Mm -hmm. kind of the first part of the question to you is how do you, I guess, how do you feel about that? How do you respond? I'm 50 years old and I'm fat and I'm out of shape and I've got a kid coming in with a four wheel drive truck with mud all over it. And I've got a bed cover on the back or a diesel gas tank. And I'm trying to figure out how to cut the front strip on this thing or how to cut the back window. My fat butt doesn't want to get up in the back. I don't want to, I don't know how to access it. I don't want to get over. I don't want to clean the truck because it's got mud all over it. Guess what? I'll go over here to the plotter. I'll cut the front strip out in the back window and might as well do the side while I'm at it, then I'll open the doors, get inside, and put them on. Why not, Ted? I, Tell me, Ted, why not? I mean, come why on, man. I'm, I'm fat and lazy. <laughs> now, I, now? It, no, I was saying to Ted's question, in response to your answer, I'm saying, Ted, right. why not? I feel like, you know, one, one barrier would be if you simply don't feel comfortable enough with the software, that's going to be a huge barrier to feeling like, you know, why would I bother plotting it? I'm just going to do it. I can can cut it myself, get it over with. Um, you know, so com- being comfortable with a plotter, I would definitely. But but um, let me agree. I'm gonna go agree ahead. with. The, I want I want to agree with that gentleman because, you know, I, I'm really good at window tint. I don't know if I'm being arrogant or just confident, but <laughs> I know how to craft a pattern and put it on and do a really really good job. And you know, I'll never let a plotter outperform me. But you know, there's sacrifices that are made when you use a plotter or a machine and when other patterns have been scanned in and you don't know how to scale patterns down or get the, you know, there's so many variables. I get, I get it, you know, but it is, it is a sacrifice that you, you have to make in your business and you're the, you're the judge of your business and how you want to run it. And if you're doing a volume business or maybe you're new at the business and maybe the plotter is better than you at hand cutting, there's a million scenarios that this machine will benefit you. But if you're just an old, you know, old school hand cutter and you're doing like $500 and up a car and you don't need really need to do more than two cars a day and you don't want to let a plotter slow you down, don't buy it. It ain't for you, man. Trust me. You'll cuss it. You'll throw it up against the wall, and you'll call everybody, uh, you know, like me and, and the software people, uh, they'd cuss us too. Trust me. It's not worth it, man. So, you know, but it has a place. It has a place in the market. How does this plotter, um, Fano asked, what about Stone Guard countertop film installers? Um, is this something that could be used? I, I would imagine it's more like a thicker film, anti-graffiti type of film. Are you familiar with it by chance? Yeah, but I'm 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 not an expert. Okay, I I could not answer that question. I know it cuts our window film, and uh, you know I know it probably cuts light films to ours. If you start challenging it with other substrates, mm-hmm. uh, you know you're going past my skill level. It hasn't been field tested, and I don't give it my blessing because I just don't know. Uh, probably would cut it if you wanted to, but I I don't want to sit here and speculate because that's all I'd be doing. So Haas Evans oh, said. Yeah. Um, I have used a 32 inch US cutter laser point two, and it was great with no issues. Now I have a Jaguar 40 inch in my mobile trailer. I'm still going to get one of these smaller ones from Ralph to go to my uh, home shop to cut, um, to cut out walking to like to and from his mobile trailer. So he's just saying this, this is a great solution. Um, and then we had Ryan said, I'm not a plotter. I'm not a plotter tinter hand cutter for 14 years. This would be my introduction to it. Well, I think Ryan, like I think that's the whole idea. Is this is a this is a very low barrier to entry introduction to using a plotter. Small investment, potentially huge return. We're we're going in a niche here. We're we're going to find somebody that's got a ten business, but they're not ready for the five thousand dollar investment. They are wanting to slide into a plotter. And they want to have 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 service to cut patterns that you know of anything that comes in the door, and they want to acclimate to the software 
They, they want to learn how to dial these things in and cut with them and get used to it. And then we encourage this to be a short term as short term as necessary, or it could be permanent, you know, uh, go to a different plotter, go to a larger plotter. And, and, and I want to kill one stereotype. Sure. I'm starting out with 28 inch format machines, but that doesn't mean we're not going to offer 40 inch wide or, or, you know, machines that can handle 36 and 40 inch rolls. We just are, this was an accident that happened and it's coming at me so fast. I'm one man and I can't keep up with it fast enough. But uh, we, we could sell a 40-inch wide stepper motor plotter right now for a few hundred dollars more, and I have you cutting on it tomorrow, but I'm, 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 I'm not ready yet. I'm step just not step. ready. To, it exists. I'm not waiting on the machine to be made. Um, you, you know, I'm getting so many free plotters sent to me right now that we're, you know, researching and develop, you know, putting in development, that, you know, to, to, to you know, th there's a lot more going on. There's... You know, each each plotter has its firmware. You know, you've got drivers that are in the middle. You've got, you know, software that actually has pattern database. And then you've got every machine on the planet that has plus or minus 1%, you know, calibration issues. You've got to scale everything, and you've got to know how to do it. So when somebody says, hey, I want to buy a plotter, you got to send it to them. You know, you got to be able to say. All right, we're going to circle back there. We're going to circle yeah. back okay. there. Okay. Ped asked, when you're plotting tint and applying it, do you still have to file the edges? I would say that with any any plotter, anybody's pat pattern software, you know, you're you'll be in the field and you'll be trying to get that perfect fit and you won't get it. So, you know, if you make field adjustments, I mean, put it up there, you know, put it up there, you know, up into the beveled edge, you know, or, or maybe this half will be perfect, this half won't. Then you make field adjustments. Learn how to shave. Learn how to back blade. You know, you can spend an extra, it's amazing, 30 seconds per window, dial that sucker in, and your edges will be fine every time. If you're the kind of person that wants to put it up there and just cry when it doesn't look perfect, then that's what you're going to get. Uh, but, but every now and then, you get lucky, man. Hey, this is perfect. It just worked. You know, let's go to the next one. But you're not going to get lucky every window. But uh, those are just little nuisances with plotters that are easily resolved with just a little bit of practice. I mean, and... and Haas Evans cool. commented, no, if the plotter is scaled right, then it, uh, it'll be a great edge. And, you know, like you just said, even if it's not scaled right and you do have to do a little bit of cutting, um, you still, I would imagine, saved a lot of time from hand cutting the whole the whole pattern. You know? Oh, absolutely. You, you, it's like anything, man. You got to get used to them. If you're a hand cutter, it's going to be foreign to you. You know, you're, 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 again, we're talking about culture. You're, you're in a culture where you're used to hand cutting, and then you're introducing yourself to something totally different with a plotter, and, you know, somebody else has decided how that pattern should be cut, or that, that plotter decided how it's going to be scaled. And, you know, you, you might want to make some field adjustments and know a little bit about the software because, you know, you can adjust it too. Then, you know, things will smooth out for you, man. You'll get, you got to acclimate. You got to get used to it. When you do, you can, you can jam. So Ted said there's no difference by the time you found and chosen the vehicle, windows, et cetera, on Expel DAP, plotted it and started to apply it. You may as well bulk it. No. Well, Ted, a couple of things that I, I just before, uh, Ralph, before you address this one, a couple of things we've talked about on previous Tint Wisdoms was just the idea that, you know, while, you know, if, if you're looking to expand your tin company, if you're looking to get cars in and out faster, it's easier to train somebody to work a plotter and prep, you know, the prep the film, cut it all out and so on and have it ready for you to apply. If you're a one man band, then maybe it is faster for you to just hand cut it. Maybe I'm just saying, but if you're looking for a way to knock out more cars, having somebody able to plot that car uh, is something that you can train anybody to do while as you know, having them hand cut it obviously requires more. Is there any other? Yeah. What if you have a helper? And, and, and you know, what if you have a receptionist, you know, now they can be trained to cut the patterns out. You know, where you just walk into your business and these patterns are already cut and ready to be laid. And you're just like, just, just hold my beer. I'm going to put these on. You know, you don't have to spend time cutting it. You know, yeah. it's really great, you know, in, in that, that respect. So David Rosenberg said plotters are not for everyone. You can talk yourself into it or out of it. Looks like Ralph is helping make it easier to talk yourself into it if anyone's interested. And, you know, I agree. You can definitely talk yourself in. You can always focus on the cons of something, but I feel like it's more interesting on focusing on the pros because there's, I doubt there's nobody in it. Like there's nobody in it other than plotter salesmen that are in it to like, there's, there's no tin shops out there that are using plotters and are pro plotters and they're doing it 
with um with for reasons other than it's working for them. You know, there's no like hidden motive be, behind it. If it if it wasn't a good idea, nobody would be using plotters for the most part. So I feel like you know when you focus in on the people who have it figured out. It's going to be more beneficial than ever focusing on the downsides as, because the downsides are the downsides, you know. As the plotter manufacturers say, um, they don't just poop money. You've got to implement a, a strategy with the plotter, and you, you know the ones that figure that out are the ones that win. You and, know, and, and they do really nice tent jobs. Haas is one of those people. He says, "I cut thirty minutes out from hand cutting, and I've been hand cutting for fourteen years." Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I imagine if you take somebody who's been hand cutting for 14 years, you hand a plotter, you put a plotter in front of them, they're going to say, I can hand cut way faster. But if you gave somebody a plotter and let them use it for 14 years, I'm sure they would out. I tell you what, the person if, who's hand cutting for 14 years, if you, if somebody called, you made an appointment and gave you a deposit, then you could go ahead and have the patterns cut, weeded, ready to go when you got the car. That's a and, scary thought. I mean, but if you got the deposit. Yeah, you know, you, and you're they know the, you know the shade and everything. Another obvious one is for dealer work. Dealer work. If you you know, have a pattern for a common car with a regular shade that you use, and it doesn't work out, you know, maybe the next day you can use it. You know, so you got to be careful. You don't want to cut the wrong patterns, or you know, not have the customer show up. Of course, that's not good. So Ted said we do a lot of PPF and choose pre-cut over bulk all day long. However, window tinting we always stick to bulk. I own my own company, uh, Magix, in the UK. And I guess everybody has different techniques, and it's very interesting to hear how others work, guys. And, you know, 100%, Ted, that's what this is all about. And, you know, you brought up, I, I believe, a couple comments ago, you brought up a point of, you know, by the time you, you know, pick the software and so on and get that all done, and, you know, it takes time. And those are things that are obviously going to progress and get faster and faster. Uh, I, I know, like, co the core software that Eastman just released for PPF and I think for tint as well, you know, they have uh, VIN scanning and I'm not sure if DAP has it, but just, you know, they have VIN scanning for sure. So if you're able to just scan that VIN and automatically it's going to pull up the right vehicle down to the model, down to the which windshield, you know, cameras are installed in the pattern that's mm -hmm. needed, that's going to save a lot of clicking and a lot of figuring out what model car you have in front of you. And again, mm -hmm. it's just as technology progresses, those things that seem like they're slow now are just going to get faster and faster. And I just love the idea of VIN scanning because then you don't have to even like care what model you have. You don't have to look at anything. Scan it. It's in the plotter and you're, you're good to go. Yeah, you just got to figure out if you want to cut out around the brake light or not or something. You know, you still got to figure right. some things out. But, but yeah, you don't make the mistake of cutting the wrong patterns at least. So John, that, that said, John said if you're doing only two – two to three a day than hand cut, but we do nine to 15 a day. So I like, I like mine, his plotter, uh, saves time and money. And Ha said, best part is if you don't like the soccer mom quote, soccer mom plotter, quote unquote, you can sell it to a soccer mom much easier than a $5,000 plotter. That's a thousand percent accurate. Good point. Yeah. Haas. You can definitely Probably get every dime of your money back too. <laughs> yeah. Every dime. And, you know, the other thing to point out, if you're doing flat glass or I mean, even if you're doing automotive, I'm not sure of the mm -hmm. capabilities of this plotter. Like, you know, you mentioned details and so on. But there's a lot of instances where you might be doing like, OK, you do automotive and you do some flat glass. And sometimes in that flat glass, maybe you want to cut out some letters for a window or some, you know, hours, something that's not super detailed, but mm -hmm. you, you need a plotter for it. And like that's another extension of how uh, another extension of your business another add-on, another way you can make some extra money. You can throw things in like that too. Sell your flat glass job at a higher price because you're throwing in, hey, we can do your new numbers on your window or, or whatever it is. Super cheap. And if a three or $400 plotter gets the job done, then freaking awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the plotters are wonderful. I mean, if you want to add them to your business. So uh, what do you want to talk about now? How do you want to? I want to bang you know, through these uh, questions. Okay. Um, there's still a few more. Here's my okay. I'm sorry. I can't see on my end, so it's I'm just right. I'm ready, um, man. Ted mentioned. Here's a theory. If you know the old school way, bulk and hand cutting, you can never go wrong. Relying on somebody else's judgment of a pattern really isn't uh, isn't isn't really my liking. So that's fair enough. Um, mm -hmm. Cameron said, "That's me." Used a. 60 and 72 inch graph tech for a big dealer. Love the idea of a soccer mom plotter. Great for small tin shop. I do four to five 
my own a day and could see the need for a small plotter. So another benefit to a small plotter is if you have a small workspace, if you're mobile and have a trailer, if you have a small tin shop, a one bay type tin shop, you might not have room for a big plotter. Something like this actually might work to your advantage being that it's smaller and takes up less space. Um, right now, anybody could go to prismcut.com, you know, P-R-I-S-M-C-U-T, prismcut.com, mm -hmm. and you will find a 28-inch plotter there for probably, I, I guess they have it listed for around $800. Uh, just correct me if I'm wrong. That is a, a Chinese plotter, and it's it, it, it has more features on it than a Roland or a GraphTech, and, and will cut more intricate cuts with a stepper motor. It is a better plotter than, than those models, and that same size in those other brands would cost $2,500 at least. And uh, so there's technology now that exists that gives the name brand plotters a run for their money. They're no longer just soccer mom models. They're they're getting more sophisticated and even nicer. As I, I, and I'm you know we're we're looking at those as well. So you know we don't just have to start off with these little you know entry level plotters. We can have way better technology than the, what everybody perceives to be the best. You know real soon. I mean. They're available now. I mean, not at Flex Film yet, but J anybody can buy them. Jason Omoleski said, if I already have one of the U.S. cutter plotters, are you able to modify it to do film? So is there anything that would need to be done, maybe related to the static or, I guess, the blades? What would need to be done? I would say, I would, I would say ab absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Just remember, though, you know, just having a cutter, you know, is not everything. You know, you've got to... You got to have service. You got to have something, a software to, uh, you know, that you tell it to cut. And, you know, you got to understand, you know, how to set it up. And, you know, there's a lot of little details about blade holders and, you know, which particular blade to use and how to set your Teflon strips up. And, I mean, this isn't hard stuff. I don't want to act like this is like something I figured out and nobody knows. But there is uh, scaling issues that you've got to deal with and you've got to, drivers you know so yeah anything can be done we just have to have everybody on board you know uh, the manufacturer i want i like to if i'm going to provide something they got to be on board with with the with the concept they're my part as my partners and the and the software company we have to know that the drivers are able to you know be in between the firmware and the and the software to actually communicate with the plotter and tell what to do and then they've got to be able to support it you know if you ever have any problems in the field you got to you need somebody to help you you know they've got to be willing to jump in and get it fixed you know you're making money this is your business it's a plotter you know so, so yeah having a plotter is great that that's a great start you know there's a security key that's necessary you know where part of the program lives on it and the other part is a lot downloaded on the laptop and you know you got to have those two together to make sure the service works and it's a security measure to keep people from hacking it and stuff like that so there's a lot more moving parts than just a plotter but yeah the plotter is a great start and yes it can be utilized to cut patterns and um you know, we would be more than willing to try to help if that was a, a some sort of a idea that you had, you know, needed some help. So, okay, so what we've established here is these small plotters are great solutions for shops for a variety of reasons. Low barrier to entry, um, you know, it's uh, as far as price goes, it's small, it's now, you know, you're bridging the gap with support, which would be the reason why we haven't seen them very become very popular in the past. My first question is, is there anything we like as the tin companies out there that are interested, what mm -hmm. can they do, if anything, to help with that bridging of the gap of support? Is there something they can do to is that something like you completely have handled through your testing and, and you're going to be ongoing, obviously figuring things out? Or is there ways that shops that integrate these plotters can also help with that bridging of the gap and knowledge share? Well, I, I'm willing to help people just because i that's what i do i mean go to my youtube channel i expose every trade secret in our industry to try to help people tent if they need help with plotters they can call me or we can do things to try to help them that is our nature okay but i am trying to tie in these plotters and and our ability to provide them to customers that buy film from us to help us get new customers 
you know, we, we would love to tie these plotters into film sales, you know, and see that they can get maybe credit for the film they buy to not have to pay for service or get it at a lower price. You know, there is a complete system here that we're putting into place to try to go past just providing good film tools and a coffee mug and a banner. We want to have help you in your business in, in cut patterns, you know, so you did, can make money. Did you and say then, coffee mugs? Yeah, uh, yeah, coffee mug. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and we we, we want to support the customer and go a, a little further, and that's uh, you know that's what we're here to do. Um, so so it's a system, you know, it all works together. You know, our partnerships with the software provider and the manufacturer. Let's say your plotter doesn't work right or you know it, it malfunctions. Well, why won't you just give it back to us? We'll send it back to have it refurbished. We'll get you another one. You're our customer. You're buying our film. We can give you a level of service that we couldn't give you if you just bought one through us and then went on to your other film company and said, you know, I need, I need help. Well, well, there's no money built in for us to support you. You you just wanted a plotter. You know, we're not really in the plotter business. We're not trying to sell plotters and make money. We're trying to provide a, it's like a cell phone. The, the Verizon doesn't make money off the cell phones, but if they can get you in one and you like what it does for you, you will buy the service. Our window film is the service. You know, the service that make the phone ring and talk on it is what Verizon sells. That's where they make their money. All we're trying to do is, you know, increase our film sales, you know, and do it through helping our customers more than our competitors are able to help our customers and put a system in place. Hey, hey listen, man, Ralph, I love your 28 inch plotter, but I'm, I'm just, I need a 36. Or, or something that'll cut a 40 inch roll. Um, what can you do? I'll tell you what, why don't you trade the plotter in, you know, just for a nominal fee or you've been buying a lot of film. I'm not even going to charge you anything. Why don't we just trade it in and get you a larger one? And, you know, you just plot on, you know, we're here to help you. You're helping us. You know, we're working as a team. So to kind of yeah. recap that, you know, the way you're positioning this plotter is it's going to be, it's one extra piece to the, to the puzzle of adding value um, Absolutely. Four tin shops. Absolutely. It, not that you're, you're, you know, um, you're, you're doing it because it's going to help them. It's going to help help and helping them essentially helps them. You know, if their business is successful. If they're more efficient, then that means they're probably going to buy more film. That's, that's your reward at the end. It's not, you're yeah, not. Yeah, Flex Film has wonderful film and they'll help you run your business too with a plotter. And, and they've been wonderful to deal with. You know, they've, Done it up, you know. They've helped me th the whole way. You know, every question I have, it's all answered, and the service works. And uh, every, you know, that's that's what we're doing. We're trying to change the industry. We're trying to get these. You know, I'm not really trying to worry about my competitors, but I'm trying to go deeper and, and get it better. You know, deeper relationships with my customers and help them really make money. You know, and uh, there's there's a there's a, there's a market there. There's there's a niche between the the, the these new window tenders and the ones that are established that don't want to spend five thousand dollars. But if you want to spend five thousand dollars, we can help you. We can we can get you one of those too, no problem. You know, but I don't see that to be necessary in every every situation. So John Baranowski asked, uh, "What's your film?" So I imagine he's saying, "Like, what film brand are we talking about?" So you're talking about Flex Film. That's that's your film brand. Yes. Automotive, flat glass, whole deal. Uh, what's the website? It's Flex Films. Uh, FlexFilmStore.com. FlexFilmPlus.com. It takes you to the same place. Cool. Got a lot of URLs. <laughs> cool. Just wanted to kind of point that out. And then Cameron said, I love your passion, Ralph. Never seen any type of support from a distributor like this. So, you know, this is one of those things when, when you say what film brand is right for me, um, you're trying to add value. This is, this is one of your many value adds, yeah? Look, you know, the sales reps will call you up. I'm, I'm guilty of this. You know, we'd like to get you a sample. We've got, we've got good film and, uh, you know, we got, we, we can supply you with the tools and, uh, you know, we've got some banners and some, um, other point of sale materials as well. That's it. You know, what else you got, man? Well, we got a smile, you know, uh, w where's your film made or, you know, how, we, we can't tell you, you know, I'm going to give you way more service than that. I'm, I'm adding plotters to it, you know? So that's my thinking. So, that's just my thinking. So back to the plotters, what moving forward, let's say, let's pick a couple scenarios. So let's say you currently are a window film dealer. You're selling window film, you're installing window film, and you're not installing flex film, but you're going, Ralph, I love what you're doing. 
I want to try this out. It sounds like a great idea. You know, I, I currently am a so-and-so dealer. Let's say you're a 5M dealer okay. to make up a name. What we're probably going to discover is that the nine times out of 10, you're buying something from somebody who is just like us. We don't make film. You're, you know, they're private labeling something. Well, you'll probably find out we're probably all using the same supplier. So you could get the same film from us, probably a cheaper price, and get a plotter. And you may say, you know what, that makes sense to me. So I'm going to go with Flex Film and not this other company because Flex Film's figure out a way to add value. That's exactly what's going to happen. Okay, but so let's say right now, <laughs> okay. um, let's say right now, you know, you're, you're not going to necessarily, I would imagine if you've been installing for a brand for the last five years, you may okay. think this sounds freaking great. I, I want to try it, but you're not going to necessarily drop your entire film line, make that purchase for Flex Film. With, and I, I don't know. I'm just trying to bridge the gap between, you know, we have a ton of window film installers watching right now and right. they all are installing a film. Let's take let's ignore the ones that are currently you know buying flex film because those are going to be easy peasy um, to integrate this plotter. What about the 10 companies who are not currently buying flex film? Is it a minimum purchase of flex film? What kind of commitment did they make or what kind of plan do you have for rolling this out for dealers that want to? Want to, you know, they say, I, I want to get my hands on this. You know, we're, we're thinking about, we're, we're not thinking about, what we're going to do is we're going to offer a plan where you buy X amount of film, and in this plan, you get this plotter. Or maybe if you spend $150 more, you get, uh, maybe not in window film, but just add another $150 to it, we'll upgrade you to the next uh, plotter, and maybe another $150 more, you get the next plotter. And, you know, we might even say if you buy X plus, you know, Anyway, there's so many, there's 101 ways I can think about to put a package together where it's a tied to buying film. And then you, with that amount of film purchase, you get the plotter. And then, you know, of course, if we deliver a plotter, it'll, it'll be ready to cut and it'll have probably three months of service with it, you know. And so, then after that, you'll have to buy service to continue using it through us. So as far as you can tell right now, what's the future look like as far as um, between right now and shops being able to integrate this plotter into their business. Is there a time frame that you're looking at? I know you're still doing some testing and you mentioned you're receiving some other plotters to do additional testing on. What's the time frame I, look like? I think by the end of next week, we'll be able to have a, 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 a variety of choices, at least two, you know, 28 inch plotters. And then the week after the week after we might add a third plotter, you know, then we might add some larger formatting plotters that are, that'll handle 40 inch rolls or 36 inch rolls. And I think that over time you'll see, you know, us implement, you know, add more plotter choices to the menu, you know, and then of course there'll be, everything will be tied to film purchases or pricing, you know, um, to get this, to, to get the plotter, uh, you know, it's, it's going to, it's going to take a life of its own. We haven't, okay. You know, I, I didn't intend to do this live like I'm trying to roll out my my program and I've got it all figured out. And I'm I'm just enjoying being part of changing an industry and a culture, you know, and bringing in a plotter. Uh, I, I'm first. I'm doing this. My competition will follow me. I can't stop it. So somebody so I've had people say, well, why do you want to do a live and give up your secrets? You can't hide them, man. You know, people knocking off my heat box or, you know, people got uh, got thoughts by idea to sell ceramic film, you know, and how I sold it was a good idea and everybody uses it. You know, you just got to be first, man. And, you know, I don't mind if people copy me. I just want to make sure I'm two steps ahead of them, you know. And, Fair and enough. I'm, I'm, I, I think that's the that's the proper way to leadership is you're not worried about what your competition's doing. You're not worried about comp copied. You're worried about the next thing and the next thing and staying ahead. Um Speaking of copying, Cody mentioned, am I going to get in the mail a TintWiz branded plotter just like TriEdge? And then Haas said, I'd like to be, I'd like mine to be TintWiz branded as well. So uh, mm -hmm. yes, somehow, some way there's going to be some purple TintWiz plotters this year. So keep a lookout for that. But yeah. a question that's directed at you, Ralph, um, Jason, or I'm sorry, let me go back a question. Joey sure. said, we use Lumar. How does Flex Film compare to Lumar? Uh, Lumar is a really good company and I, I mean, they're not, I don't sell their film or private label their product, but, um, we have, let, let's just say if they offer some, something that we're going to refer to as a, as a Ford, we've got a Chevrolet that you know, might want to look at that has some other 
similarities than what they have, similar technologies, and we can show you a track record and a history of the film to get your confidence up to probably want to buy it. And, and I think that if it's just about film to film, uh, we've got a better track record than I think they have. So that's just, uh, I can prove it. So. <laughs> Okay, I don't know um, because yeah. they have a super extensive track record, but who uh, Jason asked? Oh, they got a wonderful track record. They got a wonderful track record. I don't know. Jason asked a great question. What is the yeah. cost of service per month through you, Ralph? So you mentioned a cutting service. Do you have any sort of idea on pricing and how that's going to work, or is you know what do you? Well, I, I'll answer it like this because I, I mean my prices will be posted soon, so they're, 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 I'm not trying to keep a secret. But you know, if you compare. You know, companies like, you know, Computer Cut, to, you know, Precision Cut, and you throw in Tent Tech 2020 and Film and Vinyl Designs, and I can keep on going for some more, but uh, all these major uh, uh, services, I think you'll find that, you know, you'll pay anywhere from a, from maybe a low $100 to $160 a month. Uh, we're probably going to be, you know, in the middle somewhere, 125. I don't know. I, I'm not quoting numbers. I'm just saying if we let's say we chose 125, and then you started buying film from us, and you went through our rewards program, and you got points, you know, for buying film, and then you put those points towards buying service. And if you bought enough film, you wouldn't have to pay anything, you know, or you may get it subsidized. Or if you're not buying enough film, I guess you'd have to pay the regular price, you know. That's kind of how we want to tie it all together. And Cameron asked, "Can I buy direct from the USA, or do I need?" to find a local distributor in Australia. So what is the plan for FlexFilm? And then what about these plotters if you're in Australia, the UK, and so on? It's it's kind of sad. You know, we don't have a distribution network in Australia. So if you bought from us, you'd have to buy, you know, directly from us and pay a crazy price to get it shipped to you. But we are, if we haven't already, I think if you went to our website, we may have opened the door to shipping to Australia and you could type in your address and see what it would cost. Um, if we haven't done that, we'll probably do it in about a week or so. We're, we're you know, we're, we've opened the door to a lot of, uh, overseas markets, uh, with our, with our software. So online only. So, you know, maybe, maybe that might appeal to you. Nice. And Vinny said, been tinting 20 years, used my own plotter this week and fit pretty good for my first cut. So, Another another positive for the uh, plotter. And Everything's going good for you. Good software. Maybe the scaling's working out for you. So when you have things going well for you, you you usually get pretty decent cuts. Jason Storm said, "Call me tomorrow if you have some time, Ralph. Great listening to you both. So much valuable info from you both, Jason. Thank you for watching." And uh, tell Jason to uh, you know hit me up on Facebook or if he has my phone number, you know just to. It helped my mind, you know. Not, uh, I won't forget. It will. It can slip my mind. So I, I right. appreciate the assistance there. <laughs> I don't have a pen or anything to write. Jason's with, like uh, Ralph. You, you, you send me a message. So give me a call tomorrow, Ralph. You're like yeah. Jason. You send me a message. So I remember. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so, okay. So what what have we tackled here? We know the plotter is a good solution. We know that it's going to be available within the next couple of weeks. We know that you're going to provide support for it. We know that you're going to have a cutting software to go along with it. Mm -hmm. National brand. Uh, it'll say on there, you know, flex cut, you know, powered by F V D film and vinyl design. Uh, we, we will wholesale distribute it, you know, uh, and we're proud to be backed by what we think is the best, you know, software out there, at least, top rated you know they got a lot of customers a lot of happy customers and been in it for years and you know i was able to pull in a 1999 van the other day and boom you know pop, pattern pop right up man I, I like that man i like being able to go to 1999 and find some patterns for a dodge van you know can you do that with all the software you know well, that's usually the complaint with patterns if, if anybody's going to say anything about patterns they're going to say well it's good with the newer cars and not so great with the older vehicles and what i really like that you did was you did a live you pulled up the plot, like you had the plotter, you had the van, and you did it all live. So there, there uh, turn the camera, you can't quite see it. So, um, is that live up on your YouTube or is it only on Facebook at the moment? Um, well, uh, the, the last video I did was uh, 
uh, only broadcast to uh, film and uh, um, no. Uh, Window Film Revolution. Window Film Revolution. Thank you. Okay, so if you want to see the video we're talking about, where Ralph, you know, pulled up, used the plotter, cut out the film, and tinted the window of the '99 van, it's in the Window Film Revolution group. And you know, I just I appreciate you know you made a click and you didn't have like at the very beginning you you clicked on the software and it wasn't it was I think connected oh, to the I've wrong plotter. Of, yeah, before, and before we're, we we we're gonna cut out a pattern right here on my table, you know. There's nothing wrong with a soccer mom plotter with a Walmart table, you know, with a with a pawn shop laptop, man. I can do amazing things with this, you know, and cut one right so, here. Do you want to do you want I have a question from Andrew and then do you want to cut something out right now live on this video? Yeah, well, what's the audience think? Because, I mean, I can sit here and, you know, do a real quick uh, deal, a demo. Absolutely. I, I feel like why not? That's what we're doing. Um, sure. Andrew wanted to ask, will you have a YouTube video on how to operate? Um, or a guide. So I imagine you're going to have a ton of those, right? Absolutely, man. YouTube is going down uh, Thursday and Friday. We're going to do the whole YouTube, you know, and we're going to put the videos on our site where, you know, how to unbox it, you know, how to how to take it out of the box, you know, how to put the stand together. You know, if that 30 minutes is down. Then we're going to tell you how to hook the, you know, everything up, dial it in. It's like we've got it down to a science. No sense in trying to reinvent the wheel and have you want to throw the stupid thing up against the wall like it, like I did, trying to figure it out over weeks. But uh, we've got it down, you know, and it's like it, it'll work. You know, I think it'll work for 98 percent of the people. There's always that that one or two per people out there that'll, you know, that, that'll that'll make it more dramatic than it should be. But that's cool. Bring them on. We'll, we'll get them cutting too, man. OK, so why don't we do this? Why don't you turn the um, just keep in mind the center of your screen is all that's visible to everybody watching because it's you're on a wide screen but really it's just that center right now it's mostly computer not really plotter there you go and uh there it is that's perfectly in screen and why don't we cut something out and, and show how it works well um let me turn my little laptop on can you see me okay am i am i in the am i in it uh turn a little more towards the laptop we got plenty of plotter we got a little bit of computer we got none of you Hold on, let me just get closer. There I you think go. We, this way. Is that better? That's bet. That's perfect. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to do this side way so we can see everything. Um, okay. Let's see. What I did is I went into the software and I picked out a um, before we started a 2009 Honda Civic. I grabbed a couple of little uh, vent uh, of stationary windows. Can you can you see that in the in the feed the what I'm going to cut is it too yes, small? Yes. So I'm going to um, let me see. Might be able to zoom in on that. I, I can see it in the picture. You're good. Okay, I'm already loaded a 24 inch roll of film. It's our uh, TerraFlex carbon, and uh, I've I've got it all I think ready to cut. I've got the I've got the driver selected because I also have a rolling that I've got in this particular laptop okay and then I, you know we just pick the patterns out and arrange them um you know one, one thing about this plotter we had touched on earlier is what's the difference between it and a rolling there's a lot of automatic features on this one that don't exist that are on the rolling and on a rolling we can scan the media and you know it knows what's in it we don't get that feature on a plotter like this we have to physically move the carriage where we want it to start we have to make sure it's not in the way of the the roller and then we have to know how much like I, i've got measurements so this is 18 18 inches you know from top to bottom and i've got a 24 inch roll and i've got to subtract my inch inch and a half for the rollers so you got to kind of know what your boundaries are so it doesn't cut so off the, the simplify medium. that so we need to just you have to be conscious of your boundaries. you got to put the That's you got to put the film in you got to feed it in you got to put the pinch rollers down and then you got to manually start it uh, where the roller will actually scan it and tell you what's in there and, and start it where it needs to start and, and it right. won't let you overcut because it knows where to stop. This okay. one doesn't have all that. You have to do that for it. You know, you have to know where to stop, but where to start. But that's pretty simple. Pre-plan. Pre okay. You're just aligning the film and aligning it on the cut software and knowing not to cut outside the boundaries, basically. That's all. Yeah, so I've set everything up and I put the carriage where it's supposed to start and I'm just going to hit cut. We'll see. So what are you cutting exactly? Hold on. Let, uh, I'm cutting two. I had to hit a button to turn it. 
Turn it on. Can you uh, hear how loud it is? I certainly can. It, it sounds louder than it really is, but it makes a funny little R2-D2 noise. That's what a stepper motor does. And right now, it's just cutting those two windows out, which I'm going to hold up in front of the camera and let so, you see it. Scott Good Goodwin just asked, uh, what so cutting program are you using? That's Film and Vinyl Designs, right? Yeah, this is Film and Vinyl Design. I've just cut these two windows out. And so at this point, um, I I'll have to have a... I'm not 100% prepared. Let me see. Where oh, here we go. I had to find my Ulfa knife. And I've got to come over here, and i got to push a button. I have to go offline so that when I control the plotter, I can move the, the film uh, back and forth. Okay. So I'm going to put the film down a little bit. Okay. I'm going to put the blade in here. I'm going to cut it. And what did you just cut, like two little quarter windows? Two little quarter windows. Okay. So if I come over here and want to just weed it real quick. Let's do it. You can see me, right? I can see you. Is that better? <laughs> That's perfect. Um, and then real quick, Jason asked if I got the package you sent me, Jason, from Tint to Ur Brand. Uh, Jason, it did come in, but it came to like my P.O. box. So I haven't picked it up yet, so I don't know what's in the package, but I do know that it arrived, and I'm looking forward to picking it up hopefully tomorrow. And then Haas said what Ralph Van Pelt is saying with all the extra stuff sounds like a lot. However, it's very quick process. So that's part of Ralph's, um, I think, like what makes him such a great teacher is he does talk about every step and really go into depth. But what Haas is saying is absolutely correct. If you're just doing it, it's going to be a lot faster than when Ralph's kind of talking about it and trying to make every step clear. Oh, yeah, it's real fast. If I had glass, can you see this pattern? Yes, very clear. Hey, I, we, I got two of them here. I just, I just weeded. I just weeded. I didn't weed this one yet, but this I could weed it real fast. So yeah. my question is this: You just cut out that little quarter window. How long would it have taken to, I guess, draw that out potentially on a quarter window, maybe with a marker, put it up on glass, and cut that out, or however, however your process is, or cutting on the glass? I, I can't imagine it would have been faster than what you just did. Yeah, the, again, that's the debatable topics. I mean, I'm going to go to a car and like use a Sharpie and probably trace it, and then I'll go hand cut it and, uh, you know, get it just like I want it and then install it. So, you know, somebody else cut that pattern. I didn't, and I don't know if that's the way I would have done it or not, and it may be as clean as the way I would have done it. It may not. Um, I may have to go back and really hand cut it if I don't like the way it's cut or, or if there's some scaling issues going on, you know, so, you know, but, but, you know, if you're doing cars on a regular basis, you kind of figure out, you know, how to, how to set this plotter up and how to make things work. And you don't have too many problems like that, but you can, you know, it, it is somebody else cutting it for you. That, that was scanned in by somebody else's thoughts about how that pattern should fit. <clears throat> then you've got, seals you know those rubber seals around cars if they, they move and change you know there's a lot of variables but for the most part you know i've been laying patterns with this software and i've been having really really good luck you know a lot of success and scott actually said that's what he's using now he's using film and vinyl designs and he did say it was a great software here's what i want to point out i sat over here with a soccer mom plotter and i cut it out it was flawless and so if i handed it to you if you know after i you know cut it out and said here weed this and I didn't tell you if I cut it on a graph tech, a rolling, or a soccer mom plotter, you wouldn't know. It's the same thing. I mean, it just cut it. It cut it the same way. It didn't cut to the release line, or I had it dialed in just perfectly. And uh, you know, it's got a, it's got its own little Teflon strip and everything. It, it had a, a stepper motor instead of a servo motor. It, it just did the job, and, and it, it'll do the job again and again and again. It just gives you the same results. It didn't skip. It didn't. Do any craziness, you know, that you, you would find in any plotter that's not set up correctly. If it's set up correctly, it cuts the same. So um, it's just a little louder. You know, it, it is a little different motor. Haas also pointed out the cool thing is if the pattern's off, you sure you could hand cut it, but send the liner into film and vinyl designs and they can scan your pattern in. So 
Um, obviously, Film and Vinyl Designs is interested in having the patterns be the best they can be. And taking other tinters' feedback is one way that they can do that. Matthew Petty also said Film and Vinyl Designs is a great software. And um, Chamal said that he, he prefers computer cut over Film and Vinyl Designs. But, you know, here's the key. It's kind of almost going back to, like, um, what we spoke about a few weeks ago on one of the Tint Wisdoms, which is there's obviously progress in this field. You know, there's people pushing the limits with their patterns, and now there's you pushing the limits with plotters and the barrier to entry into plotters and the usability mm -hmm. and the support of the plotters. And that's just, I think, incredible. You know, I love it. Well, well what, what, what our idea was with the 28-inch plotters was that they're the most affordable. If you really get into window tenders and what their habits are in our culture, most people, I would say 8 out of 10 that have the larger format plotters are not using them to cut out back windows and front windshields. They're hand cutting those because they want to be perfectly accurate. They don't want to waste a larger piece of film. Um, they're cutting out side windows. They're cutting out truck back windows. They're cutting out visor strips. And it's like, wait a minute. If you're not even using your machine to cut out uh, larger windows, then why do you need the machine? Well, the first thing somebody's going to say is because I like to order 40-inch rolls. I like to order 36-inch rolls, and I, I can't put them on that little machine. Well, that's a cultural situation. You have been taught or trained to think about cutting in 36- and 40-inch rolls. Nothing wrong with that, but you can cut anything in a linear fashion on a 20- or 24-inch roll and get the same results with about the same amount of efficiency. It, it would be like telling somebody that was trained to buy a 24-inch roll to do an oversized window in a car, like a Ford F-150, you know, or, or just a larger than 20 inch wide window in an SUV. And, but you go up to them and say, don't do it with a 24 inch roll. There's a better way to do it. Oh, what's that? Use your 36 or your 40 and roll it down 21 or 22, 23 inches. And, uh, you know, if you got a little finger to shrink, shrink it on the side, not, not the top or the bottom. You know, you'll have very minimal waste there, too. You just have to change your way of thinking. Uh, even the softwares that we use to um, cut patterns on plotters, think about, you know, you using a 36 or a 40. And they arrange the patterns to, to, to be really efficient on those width rolls. So it makes it easy for you to just want to follow suit. But you have to think outside the box and say, well, I'm going to cut, you know, maybe one or two windows out at a time, and I'm going to do it in a linear fashion. And, and by the way, that's one of the biggest mistakes I've seen people make that do make mistakes. They, they want to try to cut the whole car out at one time. They want to be able to walk away, fix them some cup of coffee, and come back, and it all be ready to weed. And it don't work like that. It just doesn't work like that. You know, if you can do that, more power to you. But, you know, if you, if you cut big, you, you screw up big, you know, when you do screw up. And um, a lot of these people that do it that way and they, you know, they, they waste all this film. They want to take a picture of it and send it to us and say, what you going to do about it? You know, how much you going to pay us? We done lost all this business. You know, plotters aren't for you, man, if that's the way you're going to operate. You just got to methodically cut out what you need as you need it and, you know, look at the tracking, you know, make sure you don't bite off more than you can chew. And, you know, when you cut two, two cut one or two windows out, you know, then cut the next two out and then just kind of plow through it till they're all done and you won't have any mistakes at all. So another thing to point out is if you're a shop that has a, let's say you have a large graph tech right now and you do paint protection film, you're mostly cutting with paint protection film. You know, mm -hmm. when you do want to go ahead and cut window film, you do have to adjust probably the actual blade that's in there. You definitely have to adjust like the pressure and possibly how much that blade sticks out. So going back and forth from tint to paint protection film, you really need a separate little blade holder and it's still a little bit of work. Whereas... You know, if you have this type of little plotter, it's it's obviously less expensive than getting a whole nother graph tech. And you can have something that's dedicated to window film that's set up ready to go. Um, and you're not interrupting your pain protection installations. Because I could see yeah. just having to switch back and forth from PPF already being too much of a pain in the butt. And you might as well just hand cut it and not mess with that. It's considered, um, I understand that it's considered taboo to, to, to use the same blade and switch back and forth between you know, different mediums, you know, different uh, substrates, you know, like you don't want to cut paint protection and then go back to the window film or cut metal film and right. go back to side film. You know, you definitely would want to um, take out the blade that's in the blade holder and exchange it with another blade and a different blade holder and then probably go to your downforce and, you know, your speed settings and, you know, adjust, 
And you can some of these more fancy potters, you can save those settings and you can just flip back and forth and you know have the presets already in there. Um, there's so much you can do. Even going back to the software that we talked about earlier, if you have some small um, like adjustments that you want to make with patterns, like let's say this little window I just I cut out, you know, maybe maybe you uh, you know you put it on there, and it was um, it's like man, this thing was a little bit too small. I could go back in there if I know how to do the adjustment, I can enlarge it a little bit and cut it again. You know, or I can hand cut it. You know, the, the, the more you understand how to use the software, the more you can, you know, make make the changes to adapt to where your problems are. So Maverick asked, does a plotter does a plotter cut the pattern perfect on the sides? Can you program it so it's like wider? For example, if a window yes. rocks yeah, back it, and forth. Yeah, absolutely. You can you can make any adjustment on any pattern you want, and then once you dial it in and you you get it the way you like it, you can save it. And then you can cut it again and again and again, and or you can use the one that's in Film and Vinyl Designs and or, or whatever software you're going to use. I think they all have that feature. You can ma manipulate a pattern. You know, some people are like, "Hey, I'm going to shave every edge," so they just go in there and manipulate their patterns to be an extra quarter inch larger. You know, for, on the top, and then they just um, you know install it that way. Then they go and shave it. You know, because they they, they don't want to you know shave it with the edge that's already in there because they may miss the bottom, you know, and have a gap at the bottom, you know. But you can choose long and short length patterns. I think a long pattern is about five, eight, seven inch, you know, uh, b uh, below the, the little condensation rub rail, sweep, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the, the short patterns are just almost even or just maybe like a, a, just a little bit below them, you know. And, you know, you've got a lot of little uh, variations that you can manipulate the patterns and get your preferences, you know, uh, dialed in. Okay. Absolutely. So, what do we have left? Well, um, you know, I did a little demo there. We talked about the, you know, I think I, I think I, I was glad to talk about why are these plotters not in our uh, in our culture? Why why are they not in our industry? And I think we tackled that. I, I just quickly review because you know they're not supported by the manufacturers. You know, because they're selling these things, you know, to, to DIY type people that, that they don't want to get in tied up with on cutting window films, you know, because they don't know themselves what these films are and they don't understand that part of the business. And then they don't want to try to tie up with the people that are not really qualified to cut those materials. And so they all don't recommend it. And when it's not recommended, it's not supported by the people that make it, that never filters into our industry, you know, and, and you know, in, in flex film companies like me, you know, wind up selling them but but when you see where the deficiencies are and you go and you know go and negotiate with this uh the, the manufacturers you explain to them what you're doing you get them on board with you 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 you, you partner with them we're partners with these people now and they're just as excited as we are to bring their you know their 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 award-winning you know multi-million dollars in sales you know, plotter into this industry the right way where they're removed from having to support it. And they are, you know, they don't fear, you know, the, 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 the fears they've had and they're, 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 they do, uh, uh, they're more supported now. So and then of course, in other words, the reason why it's not in the industry is not because it's not a good fit for the industry. It's simply the lack of support because the lack of understanding of the industry for the manufacturers. Yeah. That is correct. And then, of course, you know, when you've got a, an award winning software provider that has a pattern database that they, they maintain and then they offer support for not only their software, but the plotter itself. You see, we're going to partner with them as well. You know, we're going to send them the plotters. We're going to make sure they know more about the plotters than anybody and how they work with their software so that we're always on point and ready to give out you know, a quality customer service to keep these things moving. And we don't have to um, keep, we keep the manufacturer out of the equation. They just want to sell the machine. Now, if I've got a problem with the machine, I call a, a high up executive that I'm partners with. And, you know, we, we do things like, Hey, I'm going to send them another one. I'm going to give you, I'm going to send this one back to the refurbish center and we're going to refurbish it. We're going to put it back in the system later on. And, you know, we just handle things internally, you know, and there's no, tie-ups you know we just have a pre-arranged you know agreement <laughs> so they love it man it, it's just gotta you gotta get everybody on board with it 
And uh, there's a lot of moving parts, you know, lots of drivers and communication and, you know, scaling, you know, there's a lot of stuff in the middle, man. And once you put it all together and get everybody on board, boom, it shows up in the industry, you know, then, you know, then, then that's the first ripple, you know, there's where the changes are going to be made. And I'm making the announcement now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on record. As far as I know, you're the first company to be doing this. And, um, you know, the fact that, the fact that, like you said, you're making these ripples, uh, it's just going to lead to more innovation in the market. And, you know, everybody should appreciate that because at the end of the day, that's what it's about is moving forward and, you know, raising the bar. I want to say something, though. Um, I don't know how many viewers we have or how things are going, but I want to tell everybody why I'm qualified to do this, okay? Because in the 90s, I opened up my first tent shop. You know, I've been in the window tinting business since 87, but I actually finished up my college, you know, opened my own business, had my own brick and mortar location, and, you know, had a little partner that shared the rent, and he did stereos, I did tent. It was a, a double draw there. And, uh, you know, after so many people in the 90s were coming in and say, hey, man, where do you buy pagers? Where do you buy beepers? You know, where, you know, and I finally said, you know what? I've got five to 10 people a week coming in asking for them. So I'm going to go out and f figure out where to, where to get these. So I got them, you know, long story short, I got the pagers. I put them in a cabinet within 30 days. I sold about 30 pagers and made $20 a pager. And then I learned that's not the way to do it. Somebody told me that the way to make money in that pager business is to sell the service. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, I found out where I could buy the service for like a dollar. And I, I would bill back then $12 a month. And I got thousands and thousands of customers to, to come underneath me, paying me $12 a month. And you would the cash flow was tremendous. And all I was I became was a billing company. Well, so what's my point? I, I used a beeper to, um, the people came to me for service. And I used the beeper to bring them to me because I was able to refurbish them. I was able to sell them at a discount because I would tie it to service. Well, window film is my service, you know, and the plotters, my beeper, the plotters, my, it's like a cell phone. You know, if we can get you into a cutter and we can help you make money, you know, then you'll come to us to buy our service, which is our product, you know, our, our film. And, um, you know, if you want to upgrade your your plotter, or just like my customers used to upgrade their beepers and they'd get a nicer one, we would take the old one in on a trade, we'd give them a new one, you know, we would charge them a little bit of difference or if they're already, or if they wanted to buy more service, we may, we may have made it free. You know, we, we repaired them, we, we tuned them, you know, we can do that with plotters. I, I'm I back. I'm back where I feel I feel good. I, I'm 50 years old. I'm not in my mid 20s anymore, and I'm going back to my grassroots of running a pager business and a tent shop. You know where I enjoyed, you know, providing a service, you know, and, and a product, you know, a beeper and a, and service. I, I'm providing a plotter, you know, and and figuring out a, a way to do this economically. And then I'm, I'm helping people, you know, with the product, too. It, that's, it's just coming together for me like that, you know? Does that make any sense? <laughs> yeah, it completely does. I mean, it's, I feel like that speaks more to your motives behind the plotter, which I yes. don't know if they're at question or not at this point. It's pretty clear that, you know, you're not here to make a profit on the plotters. You're, you know, here to add value by bridging a connection between the manufacturers and the window film industry. You can be that bridge in that support. You have the understanding and you're willing to do the trial and error of using that plotter. So your motives here aren't really in question. Um, I think it's just exciting. And, um, you know, over the next couple of weeks, I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing this roll out and hearing from the shops that do integrate this, try this out. And however that goes, not to say it's not going to go perfectly, but however that goes, it doesn't take away from what you're accomplishing, which is, you know, raising the bar and, and, and pushing, pushing the ball forward and, you know, um, creating more options for people out there. That's that's what it's all about. That's it. So that is it. Is there anything else that we haven't touched on that you want to get out there uh, regarding this plotter, or regarding what people can look out for as far as, you know, like if somebody's out there saying, hey, I love the idea of this. I mm -hmm. want to be first to, to know more about it. Where where are they going to be able to keep you know up to date with this? How are they going to be the first well, to try this out and well, so on? You know, when you don't have the service, uh, which we don't have the service on our website yet, we don't have any other information on our site yet. That's all kind of going down and being created right now. 
Uh, but but you have the plotters in stock, or you can deliver plotters, at, you know, at the drop of a hat. You want to try to find people that have the right profile, you know, somebody that may either be an existing customer of ours or somebody that may want to be a new customer and they have the right personality because, you know, I don't have the resources in place with the videos because they're being made right now and they're being edited, you know, so I'm going to have to spend my time one on one, you know, and help these, you know, these people unbox the, the plotter, show them how to put it together, walk them through, dialing it in, you know, showing them how to get a, you know, get get their laptop hooked up where they can get the service downloaded in the drivers and, you know, then the scaling, you know, it's just a process. And I, all this can be done with some really detailed videos and it would make make it to where it, it, it makes it easier on me and it doesn't require, if I'm selling a bunch of these, I can't be everywhere, you know. And then of course, you know, we're still trying to integrate our software, you know, partners, you know, into the plotters, you know, where they're, double checking some of these newer plotters that are coming in, making sure they communicate correctly and understand the scaling issues that are necessary to correct, adjust them correctly, you know, and then, you know, they, they have to physically have them in their place and they have to like see how they're dialed in and see how they cut. You know, some, some plotters take different to, to angle blades. Like maybe you're using a 25 degree, you know, blade on a rolling and that's what I'm using and everybody loves the 25 degree blade. Well, on some of these, you ain't going to get it to cut right with 25 degree blade. We've discovered that, you know? So what we're saying is this is the early stage that you're announcing. Yes. Um, keep an eye. Obviously you want to subscribe to your YouTube channel, which flex films on YouTube. Cause there's going to be a lot of videos coming your way. I imagine yep. your Facebook page. If you're not already liking flex films, Facebook page, that's going to be another place and then what i would do if i'm and i'm i'm only just putting this out there but if if i was a shop that's interested in this and i wanted to be one of the first i would probably send you an email and let you know that i'm interested in being one of the first and i, I feel like that shows a sign as to what you were talking about earlier you know, as to being a good fit for being one of the first shops to figure this out i want to interrupt you on something you before i forget i made some posts on window film revolution you know where i took a picture of a plotter or, or used a picture and, you know, and said, hey, what if I, you know, provided you a plotter and service and blah, blah, blah. And then I had like hundred and something people responded. Some people were like, take my money, you know, call me when you're ready. You know, that's the best thing you can do. Uh, put, put that kind of information in the in this feed. You know, I'll go to the, the, the post I made at WFR. I'll go to, you know, I'll go to my Facebook, you know, hit me up there. I'll go, if you know my phone number, if you, any anywhere you want to say, hey, you know, hit me up, you know, I'm ready to do this. Then I'm going to go through and make a list. I mean, I've got a lot of people. Um, I'm going to pick out, you know, some of the ones that I, you know, first, I mean, maybe I'll pick everybody. I'm not going to let anybody, you know, slide here, but I'll probably pick out the, gotcha. you know, the ones I can manage first and then, you know, you know, slowly integrate into this. And then a couple of days later, a week later, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll pick up more. And, uh, man, we're, we're going to dive into this thing quickly, but we're going to do this thing methodically and carefully you know, and, you know, some of the first people who agree to come on, we're going to make the mistakes with you. Okay. You understand that. And then we're not going to make mistakes twice. It's just, this is a dial in process, you know, cause you know, I don't have anything to go by. Nobody's done this. There's nobody that I'm copying. This is new stuff. It's innovative. Every, nobody's tried this. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not even, I'm beyond optimistic. This is a done deal. I'm too far in it. It works. Just trying to put it together, you know? So if you're, if, if you fit that bill of you like a little bit of trial and error, you want to be a first adopter and you're willing to take what comes with being a first adopter, then drop some positivity in Ralph's post. And that's how he's probably going to pick you out um, to be one of the first adopters of that. Because it's true, you know, you get the benefits of being a first adopter, but you have to be willing to also face those little bits of challenges of being a first adopter. Hey, some people, I'm not going to guarantee this or make this sound, just take it for what it's worth. So some people that I, I, I think that might fit my profile, I might just give them a free plotter. Here, I'm going to give you a free plotter. Just take it. It's going to show up. Don't ask questions. When, it, when you get it, just call me. You know, we'll go from there. You know, I, they're, they're very inexpensive machines. And um, it's crazy how many um, demo plotters that I'm getting from the, from the manufacturer. I, I mean, I'm kind of like blown away right now because they're giving me so many. I'm so overwhelmed. Because they want this to succeed. They're giving right. me plotters. Like, what? I can't believe I talked my way into this. <laughs> it's, it's still surreal, you know. Um, but uh, they're giving me some really, like, expensive ones, too. Like, it, they're not playing. They, they're really excited. Cool. So, well, uh, I mean, that's kind of the trickle-down effect. Um, you're doing something that 
You know, like your intentions are to get some plotters in tinters hands and the manufacturers appreciate that and they're trying to get some plotters in your hands, which will only benefit the tinters and so on. So that's the roll down effect. Yep. You know, you're um, right. So Matthew Petty said having a plotter can allow anyone to open a tin shop. You no longer need to know how to hand cut. Sure, being able to hand cut is cool, but it's not something you need to know how to do. For the most part, with some exceptions, that's true. You can now open a tin shop and the barrier to entry as far as skill level has uh, gone down significantly because of the plotters. And, um, and yeah, Cody also said, or Cody said, um, you know, coming from a bona fide plotter boy, I just don't want a carpal tunnel syndrome. Father started in 89 and had carpal tunnel surgery and uses a plotter 98% of the time. Now 2000 cars a year, uh, can do that to you. So that's something to always think about is, you know, if, if the plotter is doing the work or your arms doing the work and sure it might feel good in your thirties and forties, but in your fifties, you may regret it. And in your sixties, mm-hmm. you may wonder what in the world you're going to do. So you might as well, you know, efficiency now, not efficient, like efficiency when you, when you want to, not just when you have to. I'm trying to adjust my screen a little bit. Okay. <laughs> well, um, how, how many, uh, uh, are we got a lot of viewers still or about 630 people watching right now live that's it i'm just kidding that's a lot <laughs> no um it's been varying from anywhere from about 30 to 60 but okay. um but of course you know this isn't just watched live you can also watch this after the live stream on our youtube channel tint whiz mm-hmm. great way to watch or just listen if you want to listen and then it's also on itunes Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. So, like I said, if you you know sometimes it's it's you're in a car and you can listen to this sort of thing. You can also listen through it again because there's a lot of information shared here and it can be tough to catch the first go around. Um, and then, what's up, Maverick from Portland, Oregon? Um, he said, "I truly appreciate everyone and everything in this group." Um, you know, Hey, it takes a village. It's not about me. It's not about Ralph. It's not just about the group. It's about every single person that, you know, contributes in some way, uh, to this industry. So really it's, it's thank you to you. Thank you for the questions and thank you for everybody who watches comments and so on. It really does take a village. It does. So do we wrap this Uh, up? Yeah, I think we're kind of at a, at a good stopping point. I've kind of, Kind of answered everything. Uh, this is not a. I'm trying to sell you a plotter video. Um, I'm sharing the news and how the industry is going to change. We're going to be a part of it. You'll find other people that'll see this idea and they'll jump in it too. This is just the way it's going to go. And uh, just remember where you saw it first. <laughs> right here at uh, Tent Wiz. On Tent Wisdom with Ralph. Um, Ralph, thank you for doing this. Thank you for putting your neck out on the line because you know with that. With all the positivity, obviously, comes the people that are going to be try and be critical of it and so on. And, you know, you're putting your neck out there. You're trying something new. And, you know, thank you for doing that. Thank you. Thanks for uh, anybody that's interested in this and listening. Thank you all for supporting us, you know, and just lending us your ear. You know, if you've got any comments or opinions or ideas to share with us i'd I'd love to read them i mean i read everything after we end the live so thank you cool so um let's see a couple more comments just came in let's see andrew said i see this going big i wouldn't be surprised if rvp came up with a first with the first voice enabled plotter well that'd be freaking cool and um and mr park Thank you for watching all the way from Korea. We really appreciate that. And uh, I know this probably wasn't the easiest thing to follow along with, but really appreciate you being in here. Um, You're one of the greats. And, you know, it's an honor to have you even just as an audience member in here. And uh, I hope we'll see you this year at the Window Film Convention. Ralph, you were born in the U.S., right? Yeah, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, 1969. You're over 40? I'm 50. Okay, so Cody suggests you run for president and you at least have one vote. Um, and <laughs> Cameron said, awesome video. Thanks, Cameron, for being a part of it. Thank you. Cool. Well, thanks to everybody for watching. We'll be back on Tuesday. No, we'll be back on Thursday because today's Tuesday. So we'll be back on Thursday. And, um, and yeah, any questions for Ralph, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll make sure if he doesn't see them that 
they'll get to him. And, you know, uh, Ralph Van Pelt, you want to follow Flex Film on Facebook, also on YouTube. And that's going to be your greatest source to um, keeping up to date with this plotter introduction. And also remember to check out FlexFilmStore.com. You'll start seeing it pop up there as well real soon. Cool. Well, FlexFilmStore.com. Cool. Well, thanks again. We'll see everybody on Friday or on Thursday. <laughs> see you Thursday. Thanks. Have a great evening. Thanks again for doing this, Ralph. Thank you.